Greetings and welcome to Business Solutions After 2020 Pandemic. I'm Darina Shine, your hostess, and I'm so grateful that you're here. Today is June 27th, 2021, and I want to share with you a, a topic that I feel has helped me over the week define who I am. You know, a few people had some issues with me over the week when it involved listening Okay, so in business, we are going to have to be very selective of the things we choose to listen to. Yes, you can listen for a moment, but when it comes down to your blueprint, you know what your efforts were. You know what your manifestations were. And if they are not in alignment with what it is that you are projecting for your life, you do not have to feel guilty because someone else wants to distract your movement. Someone else wants to distract your uh, abilities to do things the way you created the blueprint. It's kind of like an engineer coming in and breaking down the entire uh, scheme of a structure. And he's telling the person who is not as advanced what, you know, why the house has to face north. It is changing. It's going to shift over the years. So they're going to tell you what is best for you um, in this situation. Now, for me, as a business developer and a coach to help with leadership for those people in which I'm servicing, I can only say for myself, there comes a time where distraction is what is keeping people back, holding people back. So why should I allow someone to come in and tell me about things that I have no interest in? If you're coming to support, if you're coming to be a support my goal as a business developer is to help you take your mind off of what it is that you're so focused on and put you into an area of peace, tranquility, harmony through the connection of your higher divine self, not the physical beat up self, not the addict, not the uh, victim. I want to uprise you. And there is only one way. In this world, no matter how many excuses we want to make for ourselves, there's only one way that is the right way. And that is the truth. And truth never changes. It never changes from who you are based upon your experience. So I tell everyone that comes my way, it is about where you are that I work with you. So if you come as the victim I'm going to tell you to go get yourself together because you're no longer a victim. Why? Because you've met higher consciousness. And when you meet the higher God within yourself, that's going to motivate you to step out. Now, some people are comfortable in that zone. It's very difficult to tell someone, oh, I'm just comfortable here. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to do this. You know, when we get that point, when we get to that point, we don't want to hear what others have to say. We only want to share our story and hear it over and over and over in our psyche. So it gives us a reason to continue to go down that path, that path of resistance, that path of uh, uh, judgment, that path of I'm not good enough or that path that she's not good enough. She doesn't know what she's doing because the truth is we reflect everything outside of us. So if I don't know what I'm doing, it's if if I say you don't know what you're doing, it's because I have no idea of what I'm doing because I can't take your journey from you. But I can also tell you that when we're on our path, we're we all have a story to tell. So if we're continually telling that story every single time, it is going to stagnate whoever you bring forth into that mission. The goal is to become more self-aware. So I'm going to give you some pointers on how I got over last week. And, you know, we're going to lose some friends along the way. The full moon is going to show us our truths. So we're going to have to face them. And then in that facing, we mature. So 
The first thing I want to talk about is self-talk. It's the most reliable way to build confidence within ourselves. Top think is where I got these 10, um, these 10 areas, but I'm going to plug them into my personal realm. So shout out to top think. Um, yeah, self-talk. When we look in the mirror, we can tell ourselves how beautiful we are, how great we are, how we're aging so phenomenally and how good we look. And then our subconscious begins to awaken and share that information with our physicalness, with our divine self. And then it becomes a, a commitment that this is what it is. So we begin to look good, feel good. Our health begins to get better. We're not as overweight as we thought we were. You know, things like that. You know, we are uh, um, phenomenally blessed, abundantly blessed. Self-talk is the best talk. So please stay positive when you're sharing the seeds that are planted through conversations that you find over the course of the day, week, month, or, you know, how often you talk to someone because someone could subliminally be planting seeds of doubt because they doubt themselves. And not only that, they also have an agenda. Some may have an agenda. So number two, challenges and hurdles and obstacles are going to get in the way. So we have to work on these changes and it's called self perspective, putting our perspective in alignment with what it is we're doing. So if we're a mechanic, believe me, we're going to find someone on the path that needs a car fixed. We're going to find someone on the path that uh, is going to ask you some basic questions on that. And you're going to be, you're going to draw those people to you. If you are a hairdresser, you're going to draw people to you who need their hair done. If you're a business developer, such as myself, I draw businesses to me because it's the self perspective and what I, the mission and vision that I focus on. Number three, emotionally aware, be emotionally aware. Um, sometimes it is in the chaotic conflict and, Uh, disruptions that make us our greatest self when we are emotionally aware because we're going to have to face those things. We're going to have to face those fears in order to be able to practice the emotional awareness that we now know we possess. Once we realize we possess them, then we pass the exam um, of our emotion. And it's okay to be who you are. I'm an emotional crier. So sometimes when I cry, a lot of people look at that as weakness. Please don't look at at that as weakness. That is a cleansing tool that I use in order to release myself from all that I'm hearing, the sadness that I'm feeling from what I see in front of me because it is within me. So I'm, I'm conjuring up an opportunity to release it and heal myself. That's what that is. So I am not playing victim. I am not needing a pat on the back. I am just needing to heal and cleanse myself. So emotional awareness is very, very profound. Number four, controlled responses. Now this is where I'm working. Um, and this is where I know that uh, a few people have told me that, you know, this is a situation that I need to really, really progress in. But hey, we are constantly learning. If we are not constantly changing and evolving, then we're not living. So control responses, I am the type that will immediately handle a situation because that's my thinking process through trauma that I've experienced over my life. I have had to learn to protect myself from the, uh, from the boldness of my uh, Sagittarian nature. And I am going to speak out what I feel or what I know my truth is at first. Okay. To make sure that my seeds are continually planning in my field of success. And um, so I control response. It, it, it tells me now it's at a point where, okay, I have the security in knowing who I am and I believe in what I, I stand for. So now I can sit and listen, but I'm only going to listen for a certain time. And then after that certain time, 
I'm not going to continue to buy into the hype of victim victimology or, um, you know, agenda seeking that is not of the path in which I'm on. Um, we can't be unequally. We cannot be unequally yoked. We have to be aligned with each other and walking on the same path in order for it to make sense so we can get the path of least resistance where more of our manifestations will come forth. And that leads me to number five, the, inevit the inevitable distractions will come. The inevitable friend losses, family refusing to listen to um, advice, suggestions. It will, it, it will come. So we have to know that it's going to come and prepare ourselves for it. Number six, train daily. Mentally, train your mind every day to know the, the substance in which you are. The inner being that's deep, deep down inside. Not the one that you put the mask on like we used to have to wear during the pandemic. We covered our smile. That wasn't really us. That was the mask. Now we take the mask off and, and we train our minds daily to project that powerful tool that we use in order to face the narcissist or the victim or the uh, person that drains our energy, okay? This is what life coaching is all about, meeting people exactly where they are and knowing who you are enough to be able to face that fear within that person you see and calm and heal yourself. Um we can't help anyone unless we have totally understood ourselves and we may not ever totally understand, but we can flow with experience, you know, um, when it's time to remove yourself from a conversation, you feel free to remove yourself, find a way. Um, and it's not rude. It is just that enough is enough. When is enough enough? Number seven, risky confidence. Sometimes you got to tell yourself, I am who I am and this is what I do. This is what I am. This is what I can offer you. And not um, a lot of people come to me and they say, I'm here to assist however you need me to assist. But here's the question. What can you bring to the table? You should know that. It's not what I want, what I need. The program naturally enhances itself. But a person has to take risks and go within their experiences and learn what they are capable of doing and then practice it. Because then the next um, number eight, embarrass yourself. I've been embarrassed so many times. There was a time in college, in college where I literally follow a professor to the restroom. She had to go to the restroom, but I'm trying to get, I got a C on this paper. I thought was an A, okay? And I was walking with her down the hall. I didn't know she was going to the restroom. I thought she was going to her office. But my goal was to let her know that I need you to see this from my perspective. You asked for an opinion. How can you give a C to an opinion of something that is reflective of me? You know, my experience, you have to take it from my point of view. Well, by the time she went to the bathroom and washed her hands, she said, OK, you're not going to give up. Um, it's not that I bullied her into it, but it was that obviously she had to think about it and see it from another perspective in order to give a complete respectful uh, a grade for the hard work in which I felt. I deserved. Okay. Number nine, lazy life. When, now this can go two ways. Sometimes we work too hard and we are, you know, at that point of, of struggling to be, do, and to have. We're not talking about that um, area where we're overcompensating. Yes, we need to relax. You know, a lot of people tell me to relax. People just don't know. I have my relaxed time and I am always ready and I am always that one that will call people out for who they are. So it's like, I know, I know what I'm doing. I understand what I'm doing. And, you know, sometimes people need to be 
taken into that area of accountability, of responsibility, of bluntness, of truth. And most people are not used to that. They're used to sugarcoating. If you want a sugarcoater, go get a counselor and have that counselor revert back to you exactly what you need in your life so that when you do come to someone who is willing to assist and help and allow you to help a community, you're in that position to be able to do just that. Um, which uh, Now, the other side of lazy life is when we do absolutely nothing, play video games all day, have no future, and then ask ourselves, where did we go wrong? How are we able to, you know, when did we become a, an adult? We played so much. We never prepared for the future. So that lazy life is something that should be considered when we are making um, decisions for ourselves. Because we do. We make decisions every moment of every waking day. And the last, number 10, spread positivity. When we spread positivity, what happens is we nurture not only ourselves, but those people that are um, looking at us because those are the inner beings that are within us. So when they come unhealthy, that is something within us that is vibrating off that, that vibration and needing the assistance of what we have inside. So we have to talk to everyone we meet as though that person is the inner being of who we are on the outside of us. That may not make sense, but meditate on it and heal yourself and eventually it will. Thank you so much for joining me on this podcast today. If you find something helpful, like, comment, share um, this video and uh, please join me every Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on YouTube where we discuss development opportunities and life skills for those who are empowering themselves to become entrepreneurs and, and business developers to their, to their lives, okay? All right, thank you so much and we'll see you next time. Universal up to your success.